mission project. Mazin Nam Tekano is a member of the Directorate of State. All continental reps are members of the um, Directorate of, of State. Even uh, um, Mazin Mefor, whose office has been abolished, was a, all inside the Directorate of State. Today we see people coming on air talking what they know and what they do not know. And they go outside and talk about lies. Why they are the people feeding people with lies? The Directorate of States, the GOS, for the indigenous people of Biafra, is the governing body for this restoration project. They come on air and say it is an evil affair, it is an Anambra and Imo affair. This is all rubbish and bunk on their talking. I don't know, there are too much noise coming from your background. I don't know if I'm very clear coming out on air. From my, it's from the app. Okay, it's better now. It's far more better now. Can I go ahead? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much, Master Lozier. Um, uh, once again, dear friends, I am back. Again, um, uh, my name, like I said, is Masichina Samoru. Masichina Samoru is from Obingwa. Obingwa is in Naba province. And I'm a member of the Directorate of State for the Indigenous People of Biafra. Um, like as I was saying before the line went off, uh, people who are coming online and talking about the Directorate of State of the Indigenous People of Biafra should be dissolved, should be do this and do that. Anybody telling you that the Directorate of State is, is need to be disbanded, he is the enemy of Biafra because what they want to do they want the Directorate of State to be dissolved and make the Biafra struggle porous so that the enemy will finally come inside the Biafra struggle. Everybody knows that the members of the Directorate of State are continental reps and other positions people are being held that are being part of the members of the Directorate of State. But you see some, 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 some people coming on social media making voice messages coming talking about that the directorate of state if somebody is not doing well in the directorate of state what you have to do is you say this person is not performing his duty and he will be removed from the directorate of state mazi chike dosiem is the head of directorate of state mazi tonis rumike is the deputy directorate of state and these two people whatever they write whatever they say they are not writing as an individual they are writing as a body it is a decision from the directorate of state another point is that people come and say that the directorate of state is for the evil affair these people are liars in the directorate of state for the indigenous people of Biafra, we have more than five to six HR people in the directorate of state we have some people from Akwaibo. We have somebody from Akwaibo. We have other people from other areas that are members of the Directorate of State. So when somebody, you see somebody coming out to tell you that it, because we have decided, because of what we have known, their treachery behavior, their treachery attitude, as they come on air and start calling names and looking for who they will sell to the Nigerian government, that is why most members of the Directorate of State are kept not to be made open because the moment you make it open, they start looking for those people. They start threatening their families. They start going after their families. And that is why you see them, they come on social media, they talk nonsense, they think that we are not listening. Apart from that, the Directorate of State released a memo. And all the points they stated there, if anybody doubts, get in touch with any member of the GOS, you will find out that everything that was stated in that place, it did not start there today. Most of these things have happened like one year since, since, since March. Since March of this year, the Directorate of State has been in all this issue. They have begged people, Mazin Namdekano, in one of the meetings he had in the Directorate of State, when every, after six, mil, six hours meeting, he, he pleaded with everybody, including the deputy, the former deputy director of uh, the former deputy leader, Mazin Chemefo, Mazin Namdekano, pleaded with him. He said, in any way I have offended anybody in this place, 
We all have to move together. We all have to go for the struggle together. After when the Director of State have done everything, after he has pleaded with anybody, everybody, the same day, Masi Mefor removed himself from the forum. We don't know what exactly he wants. We don't know what exactly these people are looking for. Their mind is just to destroy this Biafra struggle. People can listen to him and hear what he's saying. He can listen to some of them and hear what they are saying. What is your problem? Can you be able to table this problem? Let us know. Secondly, because I don't want to go to that topic so much, because there are people who knows what I'm saying, and the many people you go on social media you are talking, please, please, what any information you are sending out there, any information you are releasing to the public, make sure you have an accurate information. If you're an ITOB member, you can seek information from our platforms. We have ITOB community radio, we have Radio Biafra platforms where you can and go and seek some information. Stop carrying rumors, things that are not valid, things, stories that are fake. Secondly, I want to touch one particular topic. The enemies have risen up a topic that their friends are abandoned, who are wounded. And when I see this kind of report, they say that their friends, people were wounded and abandoned. I, I feel like... What exactly does these people want? Can somebody among all the, the wounded people, whether you are in the hospital or anywhere, raise your hand, make it open that ITOB abandoned you? Can somebody, any of the wounded people, let them bring his name, bring where he is, and say that ITOB abandoned him? Let me make this story very clear. In water. We have like up to 10 people. We have some people dead. We have what on the SARS and SARS protest. Many people were killed. We have wounded people. And these wounded people, they have been taking care of them. This is a gunshot inflicted by, on, by Nigerian government. Some of them are in the hospital. When you pay a bill, you have to wait and see his improvement before you pay another bill. You go to the state, the same thing. You go to Enugu, people are all where they are taking care of them. And the many people know that you need to hand over the wounded people to those who are taking care of them. But you see how evil some people are. What they do is this. They send people. For Let me give you an example. Like, for example, in other states, around nine people were wounded, seven people were treated in a particular hospital, and they all left home. It was remaining two people. Somebody when they make video of them say that these two people has been abandoned in the hospital, that nobody is taking care of them. This is evil. And the people, because their injury will be a little bit severe, that is why they are still in the hospital. And every effort has been if people do not know, if anybody is wounded, IPO be have a medical call where you can do what? Send anybody that is wounded and they are being taken care of. People come on social media talking nonsense what they know and what they do not know. If I if IPOB can release for you the amount of money spent for wounded people, I, most of you cannot believe it. What many of our people are doing, some of our people are evil. The people who are agents to those who are campaigning that IPOB left people, what do they do, Mazalozie? They go to the hospital without taking even a banana, even a drink to the sick person. They just go there to make a video and send it to people in diaspora just to use it to blackmail IPOB. This is rubbish. This is rubbish. And I'm calling those who are doing all these things. You are, let me tell you, you are sabotaging the struggle. You are putting the people in hospital in danger. And you are using it to commit fraud because you are using it to collect money from people and you never do that thing. If you have people that are wounded, you know they are anywhere. Anybody that tell you that IPOB is not taking care of people who are wounded, he is a liar. And let me come again and talk about the DOS. People come here to talk nonsense. Some people, I see some people on BBC talking rubbish. I see some people in all kinds of platforms talking rubbish. Here. In 2017, there were people who were ahead of this directorate of state. 
all our people killed in Lombo, all our people killed in National High School Laba, they abandoned all the people that were killed. And I'm very, very sure that time Mazin Namdekano was still in prison and Mazu Chemefo was the leader of this, he was the person managing this struggle. All our people killing him, all our people killing National High School, many places our people were killed. Those former leaders could not even provide a record of our people that were killed. It was this DOS they are talking today because this DOS came we buried everybody that was killed during that time. Mazinam the Kanu made sure that everybody was buried. All the people they were killed, that their bodies were in mortuary. All the people that was wounded. One of them is one of our brothers. He's in India. It is IPOB that sponsors his medical trip to India. We might not be perfect. We might not have that big, big, big fat bank account to cater for every simple thing and we urge our people also to support. Do not say it is It is not when you see your brother in the hospital that he needs food you are expecting the directorate of state to send him money to eat while you are in Biafra land where you can easily buy him a food and go and support him in the hospital but you want IPOB DOS to send you money to go and buy him rice in the hospital it's very shameful also they say that the DOS, this DOS, when this DOS take over, I can tell you the IPOB family have grown more, more bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. This DOS family have taken this struggle to a very, a, a, a height that most of them did not expect. Is it because people were not coming and be shouting on radio and, 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 and the making noise and dragging positions? And people will sit one place and start talking rubbish against IPOB, DOS, the DOS, what and what they have done. And if you go there and see what they are talking, they are all talking jargons. It shows that none of them know what is happening in IPOB. They do not know what, even those who claim to be in the DOS, they do not know what is happening. Because what they are talking are all lies. Most of them do not give ear to listening. When you want to talk to them, what is happening, they tell you you have come to gossip and you back away. That has been their attitude. That has been their attitude. When you bring in information, they jump at you. They talk about their jurisdictions. And at the end of the day, they come out and say the DOS, the, a, a whole governing body of this Afro restoration, you want it to be dissolved and form a committee. A committee, they think this is a family meeting, or they think this is a this is what we are at war with the zoo. You want to form a committee that is to show you how demented they are. This is to show you how demented these individuals are. And the, finally, I want to point one thing, Master Laws here. Every Biafra must not forget Obi. Every Biafra must not forget what they have did, they did to us in Obi we call everybody Obi issue will never be swept under the carpet this this issue everybody must know that if yes or we can with the collaboration of the military can be able to lift our people from Obi up to Niger state and other people to other northern parts to go and execute our people young boys young boys of 18, 19, 20 years, then you know we are in for a very long thing. And the, the, the most painful part of it is this. When our people are being killed, people turn around and blame IPOB. People turn around to blame IPOB. Our people were in the house, most of them in the synagogue, where they were adopted. They adopted them by the Nigerian military. And it is we, IPOB, you are coming to blame. You are coming to blame us. But one thing that I have to say, I'm saying this, for those who think we have come here to joke, they think we have come here for a Friday meeting, or they think we have come here, if you know you are not capable, because we know not everybody is, is capable to play a 90 minutes game. Some people are very good in playing 45 minutes, they are off. Some can play 80 minutes, they are off. But when you think that because you, you are tired and you don't want to give chance, the coach will change you. 
It's as simple as that. And it is very, very bad for somebody to say, because you are saying that from IPOB, you say you will destroy IPOB. What are you talking? You start ganging up to destroy IPOB? It's just like somebody, you say, people think without IPOB, you are nobody. Ask yourself, who were you before this time? Who knows you before this time? What are you doing for your people before this time? You came to IPOB, you came to this platform, our people promoted you, our people text you because you want to get them freedom, all of a sudden you turn around and you start talking against the people, you start now fighting, and let me make it very clear, some way say you talk anything you like, we don't care, what we are going to do is right in our hearts, and nobody will go free, if you have betrayed this struggle in one way, you might have done anything for this struggle, and along the line, you decided because you have done one thing or the other, you decided you will destroy this struggle, you will make it to be useless. I'm telling you, you are just a dreamer. We're not going to take it easy with anybody. Who tried to jeopardize the life of our people? Our people have died. People are dying every day. And what you turn out to say is to put a blame game on IPOB. You want to fight human rights. You didn't fight it in Nigeria. You didn't go to fight it where they have been killing our people. It's inside that POV. You come to make your human rights. This is where you want to do your human rights. People that are being killed are men. People that are being destroyed. You come in to say, hey, hey, inside that POV, I bring. which right are you talking about? Which right are they talking about? Our right, is our right not being trampled? Are they not killing us? You don't know, talk about it. You're talking about rights inside that POV. Who have offended who? Who have offended who? Criminals. Most of them, if we come out there here, some of them we are putting guns. Criminals who we are stealing, destroying the name of IPO. When they are caught and being sent, given their position, they come out to start to defend them. Inside IPO, you gather people. They, they are very quick to call people guns, but they are the ones gathering criminals inside IPO. People who are going to steal. And after they come out to claim their IPO, and when IPOB spot them, because we do not want bad eggs inside IPOB, then they turn around and start talking against the leadership. And we are waiting for them. Every evidence, every, the letter, the DOS, some of them turn around. The full list has been killing on us, killing us on a daily basis. None of them are saying anything. They come out here to talk nonsense. They think we are here to play. If you think you can stop this restoration project, bring out yourself fully and let us bring ourselves. We are already out in the open. Whatever you think you can do, you do it now so that everybody will know his stand. Master Lossier, I think I'm getting a little bit emotional and I would like to stop here. What I want to say for those coming on this radio talking about DOS, 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 go and see the work the DOS are doing. Go and see. You are sitting in your home. You are talking rubbish. These men are working. They are putting in their best. They are making sure everything is moving. A day-to-day -day activities in IPOB are moving. You come here. You talk nonsense. You talk the DOS, DOS. Form a committee for you. You want you want a committee where you can shut down on people and do this thing. If you are not man enough to face this struggle, you go to your house and sit down. We are not here for jokes. Most of us have. We have put our family at risk. We put our life at risk. And you come here, you tell us, uh, you tell us you were this, you were that. It is your right to be the deputy leader of indigenous people of Biafra. Who, who said that? Who said that? I think we have kept, we have kept quiet for very so long. Anything somebody wants to do, let him do it. Let us see. This is a Biafra struggle. If you feel you are tired, you give way. But if you feel you are still in the game, you come. It is not that you are looking for people to stand in the back and start talking about gangs. Start talking about gangs. If you say you are man enough, you say you will destroy IPOB, destroy IPOB, let us see. If you think you are man enough, destroy IPOB and put in your mind anybody who tried to destroy this divine struggle. The prayer and the death of our people, the blood of our people who have been wasted in this struggle, it will it will cry on your head and you will never survive it. Master Lose, thank you so much for giving Good afternoon. Good evening, Biafrans, friends of Biafra, and lovers of freedom. I greet you all in the name of Chukwoki Kapiyama, 
My name is Mazi Uchechukunachi. By the grace of Elohim, myself, this very noble family, as a South American representative, the reason why I am here before you all is for you all, wherever you are listening from, to hear me and hear me right now. Because the truth in regards to the internal coup of which Mazio Bienu has been planning against this very noble family, against our head of directorate, against our DOS and against our leader, Mazen Namdekano. It didn't just start today. It started to my own notice, at least from the month of October. The man you have been hearing of causing commotion is a very, very dangerous man. Very, very deceitful and full of lies. I am not talking to you, dear friends, on hearsay. I am telling, talking to you as a former national coordinator of IPOB Brazil family before being appointed as a South American rep. I have sat on a meeting with Mazio Bien. I have listened to him hold various meetings. And what shall be reviewed right now is not on hearsay, on evidences with facts and with dates. So that when you go out there to speak or to ask him questions, you will be asking him based on facts and not on just fabricated lies. I will uh, start with dates. On the we usually hold our continental meetings every first Sunday of the month. We are in national coordinators from South America and North America will come together and discuss on the issues relating to our struggle and relating to our various families all across the continent, of which Marcio Pienu was the one, as a then, the South and the North American representative. He was holding two positions at the same time. Yet, this man was satisfied. As at, on the 2nd of November, Marzo Pienu called a sent us an email after holding a meeting with us on the 1st of November. On the 1st of November, which was the first Sunday of November. Talking jargons. Saying uh, the, 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 the directorate of state, the head of directorate, they, they need to be dissolved. And we began to ask them, ask him, how? Please come forward with a concrete evidences against these people. What do you have against them? As I'm talking to you, National coordinators and deputy national coordinators of South America and North America were in that meeting. Even Dr. Koro asked him a question on that meeting. Mazo Pieno, you are running around the bush. What do you have against these very people? Why do you want them dissolved? Mazo Pienu could not answer a very concrete.
concrete information, no concrete reason. And then I remember vividly that uh, Dr. Koro asked him, put whatever you are talking about, put it in writing. Let's understand deep of what you are talking about. Then on the 2nd of November, Mazo Bielo sent us an email. He sent us an email seeking that the DOS be dissolved. This is a man who is under oath. That's why never to insubordinate. Never to insubordinate. Our leader Mazen Namdekano. This is a man that swore under oath to be absolutely loyal and then began to write against his own superiors without any reasons. This is why I call this very thing an internal coup. Because Mazio Pienu and Mazio Chemofo had a reason they were planning to dissolve the DOS. In order to show to our leader, Mazin and the Kano, that they own the power. But unfortunately for them, as long as I still serve this very family, that is why Mazio Pienu could not make the headway on his plan. In this very moment, he sent us this very email. I will read just a part. And I would like my fellow Bia friends to ask Mazio Pienu this very question. In which he said, in one of these memos he wrote, he said here, and I will read it out. He said, I convocated a meeting wherein we had an extensive discussion on the issue in question. On rising from the meeting, we, myself and other principal servants within my jurisdiction, ascribed to the following proposals. My fellow peer friends, we, the South American national coordinators, and to my understanding, the North American national coordinators did not at any time ask Mazi Obienu to make any such statements in regard to dissolving the DOS deal, to dissolve the territory of state. This man just formulated a letter and decided to, 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 to impose it on we, the, the national coordinators and the principal servant of, of IPOB family across South America, even across North America to my understanding. Because he was resisted. Then after he was resisted, he then proceeded again to hold a meeting with not only the state coordinators of America and the regional coordinators. He colluded once again and called on South American national coordinators and the deputies together with North Americans. After our leader, Onyen Du, have said, do not hold this meeting. Mazo Pienu being a principal servant, a man who claimed to be under oath, a man who always tells us, he preaches that which he never practices. Then, after your leader have told you do not hold a meeting, Mazo Pienu, you went by her and hold that meeting and started criticizing our leader on that very meeting. In that very meeting, I could remember vividly, Dr. Koro still resisted him and told him, this thing you are doing, you are imposing this thing on us. And the women who were in that meeting, as 
Mas who are you? She said, Mas Obienu. But I overheard Mas Obienu coming out in the meeting. In one of the broadcasts they had, he said he did nothing. He did not do anything. Our leader just sat him. Because he was he was trying to find out the, 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 the evil in IPOB. But Mas Obienu, you were you are the evil. You were the evil trying to destabilize IPOB. You were the evil trying to form an internal coup against this very noble family and against the struggle of Biafra restoration. Now, my fellow Biafrans, there is one email also he sent to us on the 14th of June, 2020. We are my son and I overheard him on Saturday saying that he never supported he never supported our code of conduct. Now listen to the email Mazo Bienu forwarded to not only South American national coordinators, he forwarded to North American national coordinators as well, asking us to do the needful. After the conduct doctor, the code of conduct was formulated, enacted, and made forwarded to him to forward to the principal servant across South America and North America. Listen to what he said here. I read. Hello, everyone. This is as of the 14th of June, 2020. The time is here, 12.30 a.m. Hello, everyone. I read. I am pleased to inform you that the family has finally come up with a long awaited code of conduct. I repeat, long awaited code of conduct, which will serve as central guide and reference for all participants in our day-to-day -day dealings. Also, a conflict resolution has been established. Please read, digest, and share this document to every member of the family. Thanks for what all you do for your people. God bless you all. All hail Biafra. Best regard, obey the your principal servant. This is the same code of conduct he's criticizing that he never supported. He sent us this code of conduct as at the 14th of June, 2020. I am seeing the time here. 12.30 a.m. Fellow Biafrans, you, you cannot see the lies and the deceit of Obidio Bienu. If he supported this same code of conduct, as a June, suddenly he came out on Saturday to criticize this same code of conduct, you can all begin to observe the sincerity of Mazi Obidio Bienu in regards to the issue of Biafra restoration struggle. In regards to his loyalty, to our leader Master Namdekano, ask yourself, what is the mission of Masi Obidi Obienu? Trying to dissolve the Directorate of State and the Head of Directorate. Fellow dear friends, Obidi Obienu is a very dangerous man. But this is what I will tell Masi Obidi Obienu. Many have died for this struggle. And the Bible said the wages of sin is death. If you think uh, that this generation of Biafra will ever forgive you for this atrocity, then you are joking. There will be consequences. At the appropriate time, as long as I know him lives, for you to Act this act of insubordination after taking oaths never to do this. My generation will never forgive you except you confess your sin and come out in public and tell your friends you are sorry. You allowed yourself to be possessed by the spirit of Lucifer, to be possessed by the spirit of Judas. Having said all good things about this very noble family, about our leader, about the oath of office, about the God of God, then you believe you can turn around to criticize.
life is not a struggle. Mazo Bienu, history and posterity shall hold you accountable. And at the appropriate time, you must face the consequences. This I will promise you. There will never be forgiveness for the atrocities you have committed. You are going on social media saying all sorts of lies. All because you believe that the, 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 the leadership no longer favors you. But my you are a greedy man. For the first time in the history of Biafra, for the first time in the history of IPOB struggle, Mazobienu, you are the only one holding two continents. You are the only one representing two continents before your sack, before your dismiss. You were holding South American continent and you were holding North American continent. Yet you were not satisfied. Yet you were looking on the leadership of head of directorate and the direct DOS to dissolve it because of your service interest, because of your personal ego, because of your personal problem. So you think after doing all these things, our generation will forgive you. Never. You are listening to my energy. I said never, and you know it very, very well. This generation will never forgive you for this atrocity. It, you will never, never be forgiven to play around with this struggle that millions have died for. Thousands have died for. At present, our people are crying in a Bible. Yet, Mazobienu, you could not say, oh, if not for my people who are dying, if not for the people who have sacrificed their precious life for the struggle, you could not endure, you could not forego. All you could do is to try to destabilize this family. There is no problem. History and posterity, we hold you accountable soonest rather than ever. Mazi Alaziema will start for now. If there is any question, you can ask me. Hear me? Go ahead, I'm listening to you. Yeah, Mazi, everybody know that the voters are gathering and are still gathering. Based on this, now, do you have anything to tell our brothers? Because it's very, very important. These are our brothers that are doing Facebook videos now. And uh, second uh, uh, part B is uh, about our people that are working with uh, me and uh, some of my brother in transmitter session because there are a lot of information we are getting right now. I want you to tell them that they know the implication or whatever they are going to do because these watchers are gathering. That are going to my fellow dear friends, wherever you are, stand still. Our leader have told us that um, he will never disappoint us. But are we not going to disappoint him? If you are a hardcore of Biafran, if the spirit of Biafran runs in your body and soul, have it at the back of your mind that whoever sabotages the struggle must pay the price. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. It is the Bible who said it. The wages of sin is death. If you allow yourself to be used to sabotage this struggle, which you will never make a headway anyway, you know you will never succeed. You know that Okika Biyama and the spirit of our fallen heroes will expose you at the appropriate time. The wages of sin is that. Thank you all I can say. Thank you, That's my brother. Thank you. We'll talk from here again. Thank you, my brother. Mazelose, we have to leave you for Biafran. Thank you from here. Thank you.